Okay. Hi. Um, uh, as, as Marcel had said earlier, the most important, the most fundamental of our rights, inalienable in all forms, is the freedom of speech. Because if we lose the freedom of speech, we lose our ability to peacefully defend all of our other rights. And I stress the word peacefully. Therefore, as an homage to a, a whatever else he may have been, he was most definitely an ardent um, free speech defender, uh, Christopher Hitchens, I'd like to start my speech by saying, fire! 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 Has anybody been trampled to death? <laughs> you are your own agents. You are responsible for your own behavior, and our freedom of speech must be unfettered because if we are afraid to yell fire when we see some smoke, we're much more likely to die of smoke inhalation in a, in a, in a fire-filled room than we are of being trampled. Having said that, I think there are several major directions from which our freedom of speech is being threatened. One of them is, of, of course, corporate. We have um, all kinds of restrictions being put on speech from uh, copyright to whatever else. I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm sure people um, in, the, in, in, in the conservative spectrum of, of, of the world are quite well aware of these. Um, but there are other tactics, and these are connected. And what you have is, instead of um, being able to speak freely and say what you think, we have now succumbed to speech codes. And one of the most pernicious and most prevailing speech codes has come from the OIC. Uh, OIC was men mentioned yesterday. It is the Organization of Islamic Conference, and they have attempted to bring in laws on the international front that would make defamation of religion and or religious figures a criminal act. And of course, when they say religion and religious figures, they mean Islam and just simply are terming it in a, a more neutral language, but that is what it means. And they have repeatedly brought this to the United Nations. Now, the OIC is a powerful body. After the United Nations, it is the largest international organization. And they, they meet at, at a head of state level. So this is not something trivial. This is not something that we can dismiss easily and they do wield real power. And what they want is they want to encroach Sharia defamation codes into international law and impose them on us, not because they, they know that our, we, we're not gonna amend our constitutions, but when they know that our governments will sign international agreements, they want to sneak this into the international agreements in order to, to muzzle us through the back door. Because when you control communication, you control what your citizens are informed about. Now, defamation under Sharia is very different from defamation as we understand it in our Anglo-Saxon tradition. It, under Sharia, defamation is saying anything negative about, an, about Islam, Muhammad, or any Muslim. Whether it is true or not is irrelevant. And the only guiding principle is that it would not be helpful to the promotion of spreading Islam. That is why the Muhammad cartoons were so important, because they showed that we value our ideas of freedom of speech higher than the Sharia, that we would not submit to the Sharia code of defamation, that we would not permit ourselves to be muzzled in order to conform to this barbaric 6th or 7th century idea. Now, Charlie Hebdo. It came only a couple of months after there was a shooting at the National War Memorial and on Parliament Hill. Now, before anything else, I am a mother. And at that time, my son was doing a co-op job a couple of blocks from where the shooting took place. And I was due to pick him up within about an hour of when the shooting was happening. And 
he didn't have access to a phone and, and I didn't have a cell phone and he I was afraid that he still a teenager being on you know, co-op placement from high school that he would freak out so I actually went and I snuck in through the back routes and and, and the building was supposed to be on lockdown but they couldn't find a landlord to, to, to lock the key, so they had a Canadian solution. They put a sign on the door saying, please do not enter, this door is locked due to lockdown. <laughs> so I, I got in there and I stayed there with him, but, but after that I thought, okay, this is really bad, we gotta do something. And then when the Charlie Hebdo things happened last January, like January a year ago, I said, okay, we saw people saying, we are Charlie, I just suis Charlie, and, 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 and standing with Charlie Hebdo, and, and all these things. But within days, we were saying, well, freedom of speech, but you shouldn't provoke. What you're seeing is an inversion of, of, of incitement. If I were to say, oh, look, look at Milan. He's a Slovak. Go beat him up. Go. Go now. Every one of you. Go hit him. Right, again, you are responsible for your own actions. But in this particular case, I was advocating violence directly. Of course, I, wasn't doing, I was doing it as a rhetorical device, and you understand. But in our, in our laws, that is what has con traditionally been considered incitement to violence. Under this inversion, doing something that might anger someone and motivate them to violence has now been equated to incitement to violence. And that is very, very dangerous because you're getting be beyond the heckler's veto, you're getting to the terrorist's veto. And we must never submit to that, no matter what. So I decided that I had to do something and I was thinking and I thought, okay, so why don't I do a Draw Muhammad Day cartoon on Parliament Hill, May 20th, is International Draw Muhammad, Dra Muhammad Day. The journalist who founded it has had to have her name changed and has been living under an assumed identity somewhere. Nobody knows if she's alive or dead. But it is, the more dangerous it is to do, the more of us have to do it and spread the threat, spread the danger. They cannot kill us all, not at this point yet. And I stress yet. So I said, OK, uh, on May 20th is Dra Muhammad Day. So last January, I contacted the appropriate people and found out how to do it. And they told me, well, this is very easy. About a week before the, you want to hold the event, email us this form, and everything will be fine. I says, a week before the event? I mean, come on, I want to be able to advertise. I says, no, no, we're not willing to really accept it until just about a week before the event, because before that, it, uh, no, it's just, just email it to us a week before the event. I said, okay, I'll email it a week before the event. So a week before the event, I do the hour. I am kind of picky that way. I email in my, my request, and I start talking with them and going back and forth. Everything is good. By the weekend, they say, okay, fine, everything's good. All we need to do now is, uh, is uh, you should have a me meeting with the RCMP officers in charge, and uh, they will, uh, the permit will be granted based on the result of that interview. So on Friday afternoon, this particular event was supposed to be on a Wednesday, May 20th, so the Friday before that Wednesday, I had a nice interview with uh, Sergeant Rousseau of the RCMP protective uh, unit on the Parliament Hill and one of his uh, aides and one of the constables. And we met at Tim Hortons and uh, talked about it and they s had some concerns and so I moved the times around to be when they wanted so it wouldn't interfere with a yoga on the hill event and I m agreed to move the location so it wouldn't be too much in the way and everything. Yeah, sure, as long as you let me do it. So uh, I had brought them an example of what I wanted to make my, my, my display of. And I wanted to do it in a free speech wall kind of a manner. And they were fine with that. Um, they gave me the dimensions of, of eight, feet, 8 to 12 feet long and both sided. And we, we ironed everything out. And as, as we were leaving the meeting, they says, OK, you fast the interview. You have your permit. So uh, you should have it. But you should have an email of, a, of with your permit within an hour. You can go ahead and start doing your publicity. Yeah, I'm uh, 
I'm a little bit naive. When people tell me that, I believe them, and I believe Sergeant Rousseau. So uh, I started doing my publicity, and it was going great. People were interested, people wanted to go, and on the Tuesday at 5.20 in the afternoon, before the event was supposed to be held on Wednesday, I get a phone call from Heritage Canada saying, um, your request for permit has been denied. Okay, so here I've been walking around for days saying your permit's been granted and advertising because of it, and now I'm a liar on top of everything else. And you've got two more minutes of free speech. <laughs> well, we went, I went back and back and back trying to see what I could get away with holding. I kept making it less provocative. Actually, when I said it about the drama Muhammad Day, I didn't want to isolate Islam, so I had... Uh, in, uh, internet, uh, at the opportunity of the draw Muhammad Day, equal opportunity blasphemy day, can't draw any political and or religious figure you want. I walked it back, I walked it back. Eventually we agreed on a free speech wall like they have at universities. Um, uh, it would be passed after the tourist season in September. Everything went great. And again, the last hurdle would be having the RCMP appointment. So I meet with the RCMP about three weeks before the date that they had told me I was allowed to have it at. And they says, okay, yeah, yeah, you've passed all the hurdles. You have your permit. We'll have it emailed to you very, very soon. You can start your advertising. Well, this time I didn't believe them and I waited and three days before the event, they finally emailed me the permit and I could start doing my advertising. However, what I hadn't realized that, that the permit was cut down and down and down uh, and I had to put the hate propaganda laws all on the wall because they told me that if anybody got arrested because they put something they didn't know was illegal, and then they cut down my wall area to be about this big, no bigger than that. And so by the time I put that in, I had an area about this large that was not covered with the prohibitions of what may and may not be said. So I, I had that, hey, every little bit's, bit counts, right? Every centimeter counts. And eventually I had it, and they protected me so well from being attacked that they placed me in an area which was cordoned off from the public by b these big ropes. And the constable that was my, supposed to be my protective unit stood and glared at anybody who even considered perhaps crossing that cordon to see what it was that that sign was saying because it was so far away from any of the paths that people would not have been able with bare eye without binoculars to read what the whole display was even about. We'll see. This coming May 20th, I am hoping to have an exactly the same kind of a free speech wall that I have now proven I can have without an incident, but in a more traffic friendly area. And I'm hoping they're gonna forget that May 20th is the International Drama Hamid Day. Thank you. Thank you.